This is Pays. In a pod. Join us as we make missionaries who make missionaries. Hello and welcome back to the podcast that we have going. Um, it is called Pays in a Pod. Um, super exciting. And today we have Kelly Bronton with us. Who, Kelly, you have been with, you were with Pays for a really long time. How long did you do Pays for? Hello, I was with Pays for 15 years. 15 years so yeah quite a long time and in fact you actually you actually started um in my 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 hometown didn't you I did yeah you were probably what you would have been like in primary school or something potentially I do know that you did run a lunch club in my high school when I was in first year so that's year eight or year seven I think in England terms if you're listening in England I was 11 years old anyway whatever that was but I did not choose to go (laughs) (laughs) what Uh, I'm so sorry Kelly I did this thing called school dinners um and so it it clashed with school dinner time I know you're busy you had other things yeah yeah I was very busy (laughs) that's my that's my excuse as an 11 year old I was just too busy (laughs) had to prioritize food in those days that that's a fair enough I think <laughs> yeah it's true but yeah so we have been starting this series called Kingdom Principles um and it's just a little bit of an introduction into who we are as peers what we are based on we have this foundation of Kingdom Principles that we love to teach at foundational training and Kelly was training director for many many years for peers um she has moved on from us which you know it, we're so excited to send you into um greater things um but it's been very exciting to have you back for this podcast to bring back one of the principles that you have probably taught the most um during foundational training or within within um peers and teaching our apprentices what the kingdom principles are and so what do the kingdom principles mean to you kelly um oh wow yeah the kingdom principles i mean for 15 years has been something i've either been taught or I have taught myself um not to myself but I have been the teacher (laughs) um like just many times a year really so they've kind of been a constant um I guess like kind of guide over those 15 years and so the great thing with the king of principles is every year whether I was hearing them again or like reviewing them to prepare to teach a king of principle um it was always either, you know, I might have like a whole new revelation about that and it might teach me something completely new, but if nothing else, it was always like a check again of, oh, bless you. <laughs> that was a rather loud burp from the baby. Um, it was always a check of, you know, am I, am I doing this? Have I really taken this into my heart? Am I allowing God to develop this, this character in me? So these have been a really key part in my growth as a Christian and as just a human being, you know, wanting to grow. And um, yeah, so I love the kingdom principles. I find them so helpful, so practical and, and always challenging, which I enjoy. I like to get my brain around. That's amazing. Oh, I love that. So before we get stuck into the kingdom principle um, that you're going to bring us today, I would love to just do a little bit of a quiz with you, a little bit of a um, exciting game, um, (laughs) as I like to call it, Um, because you aren't from the UK. You are um, American born and bred in the USA, um, but you have lived on this side of the planet for a a long time. But I just want to, um, you know, check in and see where you are up to um, with some certain things, maybe certain words and certain items, um, Mm -hmm. mainly food, uh, because food is important and (laughs) and see what you feel so it's going to be a quick fire round um and I'm going to give you two options and you just say the 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 one that you use now the most or the one that you feel drawn to the most okay okay awesome so first up eggplant or aubergine (laughs) aubergine oh um UK bacon or American bacon oh my oh they're just so they're they're, they're both different. <laughs> I eat more UK bacon now. I do miss the crispy bacon sometimes. That's all right. That's okay. I'll give you that one. Um, chips or French fries? Oh man! Again, uh, only okay. 
Only French fries if they're McDonald's. Anything yeah. else? Chips. Brilliant. Um, UK pancakes or US pancakes? US pancakes. Mm. Um, nappies or diapers? I say nappies now. <laughs> There we are. Real, you, you're really British now. Um, Yorkshire puddings or bread rolls? Uh, Yorkshire puddings, hands down. Like, they're amazing. I don't know why we don't have them in America. There we go. If you're American and you're listening, look up Yorkshire puddings. Get a wee recipe going. Um, last one, jumper or sweater? <laughs> I say jumper, but it still feels wrong for some reason. <laughs> There's still that American in you. <laughs> it's amazing well that was that was just just seeing how british you've become um and very is the answer yeah well thank you <laughs> you're wonderful um so brilliant so back into the kingdom principles like we were talking um about before um the one that you've taught the most is using so I'd love you to take us through that a little bit and introduce us into that idea of that kingdom principle. Yeah, I, I love this kingdom principle because I really, I, I really love the parable that Jesus uses to teach this principle. It's a lot of people refer to it as the parable of the talents um, or depending on your translation, might say the bags of gold. And it's about the master who uh, goes away for a while and he gives um, 10 bags of gold to, to one of his servants five to another servant and one to the third servant or actually it's told in two different places and another one is like three two one and ten, so it's a bit anyway you know what i mean um and he goes away and the first two servants invest the money and double it and when he comes back he's just super happy with them but the third servant buries his in the ground because he's afraid of losing it and when the master comes back he's really not happy with the third servant and um, I think I really like this parable because when I had to start teaching this, I really had to dig into it a bit more and I couldn't just be like, oh yeah, well, that third servant, like what a loser, what was his problem? And I really had to actually be like, wait, but what did he do that was so wrong? Like, really? Like he didn't waste the money, he didn't, you know? And I really started to like empathize with this third servant and could really see, um, like, yeah, like I could see where he was coming from. And I think putting myself in the story like that has really helped me learn more about myself and also trying to figure out like, what was the master's problem? <laughs> like, why, why was he so upset with this guy? And, um, and what does that teach me about who God is? And, um, and I'm, I'm, you know, I'm really happy to say that from going through the whole process, you know, there's a time where I was like, I don't think I really like this master, uh, which is interesting because the master of course is God in the story, but came out on the other end of like wow I think I really understand something new about God's heart and actually I yeah I love this <laughs> like I love him more coming through this and I'm glad I could learn about myself through that as well and I think that when I tell the story I think most people do empathize with the third servant yeah like, it makes complete sense that you know you're worried about losing things you're trying to do the the sensible thing the safe thing so you bury the gold and at least that way when the master comes back you've not lost it you've not actually failed but the problem is is that our definition of failure is different from the master's definition or our definition of success is different from the master's definition and that's of course where king of principles the, the, the bigger thing about seeking the heart of god and understanding where he's really coming from why that's so important because we can go beyond just trying to work off of our own understanding, our own instinct. And instead, when we really kind of get who God is and what he's about, yeah. that actually takes us to a different place. It, you know, we make decisions from a different place then. So, um, yeah. So I've learned loads about myself through this mm -hmm. principle and through that parable. And I think, I think a lot of people do connect with it in that way. Yeah. And I think, Kelly, you are an incredible leader. You have started your own leadership kelly brunton leading um leadership uh business um i'm trying to think of the word business is is the correct one isn't it <laughs> um and how to train others to and you've trained others for years in how in how to lead and um i'm sure you didn't start out like that um <laughs> 
and and I'm guessing that this was one of the things that that sort of grew from that idea of using what you have and using what you've been given tell us a little bit more about that yeah absolutely I think um you know with the kingdom principles um you know 15 years ago the first time I heard them you know I made that commitment to to put God's heart first and to seek his kingdom first and the big question for me there then was, was always what is the most effective thing I can do for the kingdom of God like when I was faced with a decision or you know which opportunity should I go for or should I try this or should I not do this thing and that question has always kind of been that guide for me and um use it or lose it you know I think it, that that there's that really helpful question isn't it so what's the most effective thing for the kingdom of God and having an honest and humble assessment of yourself you know you're able to actually work out what can I do that is really going to to bless God like what can I do that is going to serve him what can I do that is going to reveal him to others and and show him to others and the answer is different for all of us you know all of us have different different talents different skills different opportunities that we can bring to that to that vision and um you know the danger is that either we don't acknowledge what we have so we bury it in the ground because we think it's not worth much I'll just bury it in the ground or we we know what we've got but we're so afraid of, of messing up we're so afraid of failing we're so afraid of we say we're afraid of how it's going to make God look but we're really afraid of how we are going to look because I'm so, like there's nothing I can <laughs> like God's so much bigger than me <laughs> you know um I can't fit him into my box and my reputation and, and my limited you know life sort of thing yeah. so the use it or lose it is is it is that real challenge when you acknowledge I've got something that I can do that I know is going to help others that I know is going to serve others and serve the kingdom of God like I've, I've just got to try I've got to do something with it and see what happens and again coming back to that understanding of what how does the master in this parable define success and how does he define sit failure and for him the failure was the servant hiding and doing nothing and the success was the servants who who did something with what they had you know and he was he was happy with them and gave them even more um yeah I, I hope that answered the question <laughs> Yeah. Oh, no, totally. And I think like you're talking about there, the first step is recognizing what we have and what we can what we can use in the kingdom of God. But what if you don't think you have anything? What if you're someone who is like, yeah, this is great for other people, but I don't have anything to give and I don't have anything, um, any good talents to use within the kingdom? What would you say? Yeah, I, I would like just pointing back to that parable. You know, I think that that's a totally understandable like feeling to have or even outlook to have because like let's let's look at this like third servant so he stands there while the master gives like 10 bags of gold to servant number one and then five bags of gold to servant number two and I guess he could have gone one of two ways he could have been thinking oh that's embarrassing for servant number two here comes my 10 bags of gold I'm glad I'm not that guy who only got half you know so he's either thinking that way or he's thinking oh no, if he only got five, I'm going to get even less. You know, like he's already sees it coming. And maybe the hit that that um, gave to his self-esteem, <laughs> his ego, that he had the least given to him. And, you know, the danger there is he's comparing what he's got to what others have got. Um, but if you really want to get really, like, really dig into this parable, if you look at the amount of money that these servants were trusted with, the third servant who only had that one bag of gold that one bag of gold was worth 15 years wages. By no means was it a small amount of money, right? It is a ridiculous amount of money. And the only reason he didn't see its value was because he was comparing it to what other people had. And yeah, they were given more, but that didn't mean that he, like the value of what he was given was any less. Like yeah. it was still extremely valuable, but he didn't see it because he was comparing. Yeah. So I think we often get stuck in this game of we think we have nothing because we see somebody else that has a real skill or has a real gift or has a real opportunity. And that's all that we see. All we see is the gift. All we see is the opportunity. We don't see 
the hours that person put into developing it. We don't see what they were like 10 years ago when they were just starting out and now here they are. You know, we, we don't see the, you know, the behind the scenes of what they've done to earn the opportunity that they have. Um, and instead we just compare what we've been given. So I really encourage anybody who feels like you've got nothing to just maybe check yourself. Like, do you feel that way simply because you're comparing to others and you think you should either have what they have or have as much as they have mm -hmm. and instead have that humble assessment of yourself. You know, humility is about having the, the right understanding of who you are yeah. not more and not less. Yeah. So to make out that you have even less, you know, like God's, he's put something of himself in you. So really take that on board, you know, like there's something of God in you, but you're looking at it and saying, I've got nothing because it's not as much as somebody else because you're preparing. So I really encourage anybody who feels that way, just to pause and really think about like, why do you feel that way? Why do you feel like you have nothing? And maybe it's because you're comparing yourself and maybe you're missing like the true value of what you do have, which might be something that is completely different, you know, than what you're comparing to. Yeah, that's so powerful. And also I think thinking back to, I don't know why I keep taking it back to like 18 year old Kelly when Kelly started. Um, <laughs> but I'm sure if you spoke to your 18 year old self now and told her what you were doing or what you have done in life, you wouldn't believe it you would be like no there's no way that's that's possible yeah. um and and so even though we can look at ourselves we can look at leaders that are in great positions and think oh what I have is so much less you don't know what God's going to do you don't know what God's going to do once you start using the skills that you've been given in that moment yeah. um which which is such an amazing thing and even beyond that like it's using the skills but it's also all of the lessons learned from failures mm -hmm. because when I like you know going back to 18 18 year old me and um the last well it's over 15 years <laughs> of um of working on teams and a lot of that time serving as a leader in different you know contexts uh, like to be honest like I in, in my head it's not I don't have like a um a little like run of success story you know like in my head I'm thinking like man that time I messed up that time I said the wrong thing that mm -hmm. time I put my foot in my mouth that time I was just working to a really bad concept you know I was just I, like I needed to learn all these lessons and that you know so when I think to grow yeah it's about making mostly opportunities but if you're afraid of failing like it doesn't matter what opportunities you have yeah. If you're afraid of failing, you're not, you're not going to take them. And failure is like the greatest teacher <laughs> because you don't want to fail twice. Yeah. <laughs> Once you've done it, you're like, I'm going to, I need to learn that lesson. But, um, there's lessons in there that I wouldn't have learned any other way. Yeah. You know? And, and so, um, I don't like failing. I prefer to avoid it. I don't <laughs> set out to fail by any means, but when I look back over all those years, um, there's plenty of failure that came up because I was trying to make the most of the opportunity. And, you know, I didn't always make the most of it because I messed up. Yeah. But I've learned from that. And off the back of that, more opportunities were given for me to keep growing. And I mean, and I mean, again, like understand this master and who God really is and the grace that he, that he gives to us, you know, he's not waiting for one mistake to take it all away. Yeah. you know the, the issue with the third servant was that he did nothing the master was like you could have at least put it in the bank to get interest on it that would have been something like just put it in a bank for interest <laughs> like act do take some sort of action you know his issue with the third servant was that he'd done nothing yeah and i i, I think that that's pretty incredible really yeah. you know that's an amazing thing to think about to think about god it's like look just try like is yeah. grace is there and and the result is here's another opportunity like try again keep going um yeah and I think that is that's one of the most powerful things that you can be allowed to do is to feel um it's something that I have found within Pia's culture that 
you are allowed to you are allowed to feel like there is permission there to do it and there's permission then to grow from it and that that's it it's like right okay you failed this once let's get up and and go again um and then you were speaking there about opportunities and what if some people feel that they have the skill and they have they have something to give um but don't feel like they're in a place where they have the opportunity yeah so um like if someone like maybe they they think they should lead but there's not really an opening for a leader mm, something yeah. like that like you yeah. feel like I should be preaching a sermon but no one's asking me to preach like is that kind of what yeah you yeah so um I think sometimes we get a bit confused because obviously this parable can be called the parable of the talents and we were like oh that's really handy that the talent which is a, a measurement of money you know also refers to stuff I'm just naturally good at I'm just born with this innate talent you know it's mm-hmm. unquantifiable it's you know it just happens you know and that's kind of how we think about it <laughs> but um that's just us putting a definition on this word you know which yeah. it was just about the amount of money that the guys were given you know and so when we think about use it or lose it we're like well if nobody's given me an opportunity to use my talent then I'm I don't have like I can't do anything about that or I need to go somewhere else or I need to make people see my talent or what you know whatever it is or then mm. um, we don't think it's something that we need to develop and work on because we're like well it's a talent I've been born with this gift so I must already be good at it, you know? So I would say, if that's where you feel like you are, again, have an honest assessment of yourself. Maybe you do have some natural ability to public speaking or to cooking or to pastoring or mentoring conversations or leadership or whatever it is. Maybe you have some musical ability and have an honest assessment of yourself first and say like, right, what am I doing to grow this? not just to be on a stage, but what am I doing in the quiet? Like, what am I doing by myself to grow this? How am I learning? How am I sharpening it? How am I investing in myself? Like, am I practicing? Am I getting feedback on what I do? Um, And then the second thing is, you know, the opportunity itself around you is a use it or lose it. So maybe the opportunity isn't to preach a sermon, but there's an opportunity to volunteer in the kids ministry you know maybe the opportunity isn't to lead worship but there's an opportunity to you know volunteer at the local like refugee shelter or whatever you know there's opportunities all around us to serve others and to to serve God and it might not be that specific talent that you think you have that you somehow are entitled to use (laughs) But actually, there's opportunities all around you. And if you can be faithful with those little opportunities, whether you get paid back for them or not in any form of attention or praise or anything, being faithful with little things leads to bigger opportunities. Yeah. And and so that's what I would encourage you to do. Yeah. That's how you feel that you've got something, but nobody else sees it yet. (laughs) You know? invest in it grow it work at it get better at it so when the opportunity comes you're ready but I don't think honestly I don't think that opportunity will come until you're making the most of the little ones that already exist around you yeah maybe you need to open your eyes as well and look around and maybe the opportunity is cleaning toilets Mm -hmm. (laughs) but that needs to be done and um God's looking for for team players you know he's looking for people who are who are in it not for themselves but but for the kingdom so do whatever it takes to, to bless the kingdom and um i believe more opportunities will come your way yeah and it, it, it's a really humbling thing isn't it um thinking about what what do we have and what what can be used and yeah like i know some people who are incredible speakers but they are even better cleaners you know <laughs> um <laughs> And, and so using that as well, using those little things that in this Christian world that we live in, we can look at speakers and see that as like the mm-hmm. pinnacle. Um, but it's really the people who are serving, um, yeah. the people outside of the church see. Um, 
that they relate to the most. I again, I know an incredible speaker, preacher, prophet um, who who works, who could do it full time, but they work in a in a mental hospital because that's where they feel um, their skills really come alive, and that's where they can speak life into people the most. And mm-hmm. if they had focused only on the speaking and preaching and all of that sort of stuff because that's the big stuff in church um they may have missed that that is that's exactly where god wants them and that's exactly this the the skills that's god using to um speak into lives of teenagers that are just hurt and um that do need that extra care um And I think that's real, really important. And so just as we're coming to a finish on this, um, are there any practical things, any practical tips that you would have to people thinking about trying to trying to figure out what what can I where can I be placed? How can I be used? Yeah, um, I think there's a couple of things you could do. Um, The first thing you could do is. um, you know, you can have a conversation with somebody that you trust, um, somebody like a mentor, a pastor, a parent, um, a good friend, and just asking them like, what do you see in me? Like, where do you think, what do you think I bring to the table? Because sometimes we're really hard on ourselves. And we think, again, we get stuck in comparison. And because I'm not as good at this thing as so-and-so, then I have no there's no space for me and that's just not true so sometimes you need another person speaking to you and be like you can do this like this is needed in the world this is going to make a difference and we all can use that encouragement we can all use that cheerleader you know so Mm. maybe asking an outside perspective um another thing you can do is just a simple question like how can I serve where where do you need help you know so whether that's speaking to your pastor or speaking to a, a charity in your community, or you know whatever that looks like, just just offering yourself to help and serve others, and um, I guarantee will open doors for you that you just never would have pushed on because you just didn't even know they existed, right? So I would encourage you to to do those couple of things. You know, ask ask for someone else's advice or input. Ask people for opportunities. Just and simply just saying, how can I help? What do you need? And, and get involved there. And, um, you know, there's this great story um, in the Bible <laughs> about Moses and, uh, you know, God is saying to Moses, you know, all this, you know, like tell him go to Pharaoh, do all this stuff, you know, if you don't know what I'm talking about, just look it up, it's great, Exodus. Um, and, and, you know, Moses is saying like, well, how, how am I supposed to do all of this stuff? You know, like what, like, I can't speak, I'm not like, what am I meant to do? And God just simply said to him, well, like, what do you have in your, what's that in your hand? And Moses looks at him and he's like, what, like my shepherd's staff? Like, Mm. I'm just a shepherd. (laughs) Like, this is just, it's just a stick I use every day. Like, what does that have to do with, you know, freeing, like, our people? Like, what does does that have to do with anything? And, um, you know, God was like, do this, like, throw throw the staff, throw the stick on the ground, and it turns into a snake, you know? And, And it was like that same staff was the staff that, turn the, the water in the Nile into blood. You know, it's the same staff that part of the Red Sea. It's the same staff that Moses held up to give the Israelites victory in battle. Like you think of all the things that were done through this common everyday tool of a shepherd. Mm-hmm. You know, like, and this man becomes like the leader of these people. <laughs> and that's what God used to do these incredible miraculous things. And so, you know, when you're asking for that input, what people see in you, or when you're asking how can you serve, you know, don't discredit the small everyday things that you already have in your hand. You know, your kindness, your ability to encourage others, your insight, your friendship, your time, whatever that might be that to you just seems everyday and ordinary. You know, God's just saying like, what's that in your hand? Like, will you just do, like, will you just let it go? Will you let me do something with that? Will you put it to use? and let God do something incredible through it. Yeah, brilliant. Oh, thank you, Kelly. 
It's so good to hear from you again and and hear you speak. I know you've been in this world of um, newborn babies and um, homeschooling and home learning, um, but it's just so incredible to hear from you again and um, and speak your wisdom into into this area. And I hope the people who are listening to this are getting some incredible stuff out of it. Um, maybe there's someone that you can pass this on to. Maybe someone's coming to your mind right now that you're like, oh, it might be good for them to listen to this. Um, also, if you're interested in finding out a little bit more, there is the Kingdom Principles book. Um, you can go to the Peers Movement website, peersmovement.com, um, and have a wee look and check out some of the other resources there. We will be uploading on Spotify, um, hopefully YouTube, and so you guys can subscribe, follow along, um, see what more we have coming. Um, but it has been great to have you, Kelly. Oh, thank you so much. I've, uh, I've talked my baby to sleep, but hopefully. I know. I'm so impressed with how he, just one second he was alert and then another second he was gone. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. It's, um, I, I love getting to share about this and it's made such an impact on me and my life. And also obviously I pass it on to my family. And so, um, yeah, what a great opportunity to get to share it. And I hope that, I hope that it's helpful. Yeah. Amazing. Well, we will see you guys or we will talk to you guys. You might hear us again um, sometime soon. Thank you for joining us today. Find out more about Pays at paysmovement.com.